Do you know the story about Shelley's doppelganger? His doppelganger? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the hidden details and foreshadowing you probably didn't catch in the viral hit film Saltburn. Since we'll be discussing important plot points, consider this your spoiler alert. Oh, Oliver, darling. So punctual. Number 10, Superbad. The last thing you might expect from the Cattons is midday screenings of Superbad. Sure enough, though, that's how Oliver Quick finds the Saltburn residents when he's introduced to them. <laughs> oh, God. Viewers were quick to point out that the majority of the film takes place in 2007, and that's the same summer that Superbad was in theaters. Any concerns of inconsistencies were quelled by director Emerald Fennell, who explained that a screener would have been provided by one of Elspeth's many connections. So don't worry, guys. I know everyone frets about things being real, but I did do my homework. And if you assumed that this was a throwaway detail, think again. Some have pointed out the similarities between Fogel's fake ID and Oliver's false identity throughout the film. Why would you lie? Either way, it was strange and entertaining to see an English aristocrat watching a Jonah Hill flick. Number 9. Mr. Brightside Though the film might be divisive, everyone can agree that Saltburn's soundtrack was a smash hit. A number of songs even went viral online, some two decades after their release. However, one classic 2000s anthem had the sneakiest influence on the plot. On Oliver's birthday, the boys take a road trip to Prescott, where Felix finds Oliver's parents sober, loving, and both very much alive. It's been hard not seeing him. Yeah, but it, it must be a lot of pressure, though, I expect. On the drive, the boys sing along to the killer's track, Mr. Brightside. Much like the song, the film has strong themes of deceit and betrayal. The song is both a perfect fit for the time period, as well as the imminent reveal that ushers in the end of Felix and Oliver's friendship. Ollie, just take a pill or something, for Christ's sake. Number 8. Coronation Theme The track that plays over the title sequence might sound familiar to music aficionados or royalty watchers. <laughs> For the past three centuries, Handel's Zadok the Priest has symbolized the anointing of the sovereign at every British coronation. For Saltburn, the song preludes a similar rise, if not by divine right, then by force. Listen closely and you'll notice one crucial detail has been changed. Zadok the Priest was replaced by Oliver Quick. change reflects Oliver's slow ascent and eventual usurpation of the Catton family. The film's director dropped the Easter egg on Twitter and praised composer Anthony Willis for his work on the arrangement. Long live the king, indeed. Number 7. The Professor To say that Oliver and Farley's meeting with their Oxford tutor is awkward is an understatement. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm sorry. Hang on. Farley starts, I take it. Not only does the professor belittle Oliver for his hometown and summer reading habits, but Farley's extremely late and barely acknowledges the fellow student. While you were busy cringing at the scene, you likely missed a crucial parallel. While the professor makes the connection that Farley's mother is a former classmate, he is quick to note that he wasn't her friend so much as a distant admirer. Oh, no, not, uh, friend. More, uh, admirer much in the same way that Oliver worships Felix and his family from afar throughout the film. The professor might not harmonize with Oliver, but the two have more in common than meets the eye. He's got you there, I'm afraid, Oliver. <laughs> Number 6. Gothic Inspiration Did Saltburn give you the heebie-jeebies? You're not alone, and there's a very good explanation why. It's my house, I can go wherever I want. Oh, okay. And you want to be in a see-through nightdress? underneath my window. Without relying on the presence or threat of supernatural forces, Emerald Fennell fostered an eerie film with only the setting and general atmosphere. The film is largely inspired by literature of the same genre, such as Brideshead Revisited, 
which Jacob Elordi read in preparation for production. Sounds like an evening with one of them. You know, a lot of Wars characters are based on my family, actually. The settings of Oxford and Saltburn lend to the creepy aesthetic. While devices like emotional distress, sexuality, and murder align the plot with the moody genre. As the film progresses, the tension rises, and despite the lack of jump scares or gore, we still find ourselves covering our eyes. Well, maybe we just need to be a bit more careful. Number 5, 2000's Aesthetic Although 2006 to 2007 might feel like yesterday to some, Saltburn can be classified as a period piece. And when it comes to a period piece, nailing the aesthetic is of the utmost importance. Students at Oxford can be seen with piercings, rugby shirts, and bootcut jeans. But the Naughties aesthetic doesn't end when the characters go to Saltburn. Even in a sophisticated setting, Emerald Fennell wanted to demonstrate the casual style of the upper class. Anything else I should know about? No, no just be yourself. Felix's fashion was inspired by that of Prince Harry, while Farley's hair seems to have been inspired by Corbin Bleu's signature high school musical do. The film is a time capsule of a lost era of fashion and pop culture, and we are definitely here for it. <laughs> Number 4. A Death Foretold When it comes to foreshadowing, it doesn't get creepier than this. Oliver adeptly knocks out the four main players of the Catton family with the deed to Saltburn as the ultimate prize. Thank God. After all those terrible, terrible accidents. While their demise may come as a shock to viewers, two deaths were hinted at moments before they occurred. In the aftermath of Felix's sudden death, the remaining family members gather for the world's most uncomfortable lunch. Oliver Dunning, why don't you tell us about last night? Last night? Mm, did you have a lovely time? Uh, yeah, it was uh, wonderful. As the coroner moves Felix's body outside, a dead-eyed Venetia pours over her glass of red wine. Some pointed out the similarities between the spilled wine and her tragic death scene. Shortly thereafter, Elspeth foretells her own death by choking on her food. Only Sir James's death remains a mystery. Any guesses? Still, it was a t terrible shock. Yeah. Number 3. Oliver's Rock Did you know that Oliver's lie was revealed in the first 30 minutes of Saltburn? When Oliver meets Felix, he appeals to the aristocratic son's kindness with an emotional story about a toxic upbringing. Dad was kind of dealing and stuff. Dealing? Sounds awful, really. Oliver later confides in his new friend that his father passed as a result of a substance use disorder, a confession that prompts Felix's invitation to Saltburn. Well, why don't you come home with me? Come to Saltburn. To support his friend, Felix invokes a family tradition of throwing a rock in a river to honor the dead. When Oliver tosses his father's rock, however, it lands in trash. Well, that can't be good. Oh. His father isn't dead at all, and the unfortunate situation is less unfortunate as it is a hint to what is yet to come. Number 2. The Minotaur The last thing one might expect from a psychological thriller is a mythological callback. Right, you should go to bed. Nevertheless, the story of the legendary hero Theseus and the Minotaur plays an important role in Saltburn. The Minotaur is a half-bull, half-man creature slayed by the warrior Theseus, who in turn betrays the royal family in order to secure the crown. Sound familiar? I thought you noticed it too. The symbol of the bull appears numerous times throughout the film, including on a pub sign in Oxford. Later, when Oliver speaks with Elspeth, a statue of Theseus killing the Minotaur is in the background. Most striking is the giant minotaur statue in the center of the maze where Felix is murdered, meeting the same fate as his literary counterpart. Darling, darling boy. My darling boy. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Doppelganger Wait, are we seeing double? Throughout the film, the themes of doubles is constant and, frankly, pretty discomforting. Mirroring is used symbolically to represent a double identity or the idea that someone is always watching. However, one particular double moment sets up the climax of the film early on. During Oliver's first breakfast at Saltburn, Venetia tells the family that Percy Bysshe Shelley's maid reportedly saw Shelley walk past a window, 
despite being in a different country. Shelley's housekeeper was cleaning one of the rooms when Shelley walked past the window and waved at her. So she waved back before she realized that Shelley was in Italy. A few hours later, he was dead. If you look behind Venetia during this scene, you can see an extra who looks almost exactly like Felix walk past the window, foreshadowing his own death. Much like Elspeth, the spooky scene gives us total chills. A few hours later, once. he drowned. Oh. Oh, that's just giving me goosebumps. Did you catch any other strange or interesting Easter eggs in Saltburn? Drop them in the comments below. Oh, thank goodness for you, Oliver. You're so perceptive. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.